let's talk about the formation of hemiacetals and acetals, which is what happens when you add an aldehyde or a ketone to an alcohol. So in my first reaction right here, here is my aldehyde. This right here would be my alcohol. Now when I add these two together, what's going to happen, this hydrogen that is on my alcohol is going to get transferred to the oxygen of my aldehyde that is double bonded to that carbon. Now when that happens, when that hydrogen bonds to that oxygen, that oxygen is essentially going to drop one of those double bonds because oxygen only wants to make two bonds. So if it's going to pick up a hydrogen, it needs to drop one of these bonds to maintain its only two bonds right there. So I'm going to draw my product just right underneath here. So there's my oxygen and now it has a hydrogen on it. That carbon still has that R group right there. This hydrogen right here, I'm going to put just down below here, just so I have room to put what's coming next right here. But that's just moved down right here. This carbon right here now needs to make another bond since it dropped that double bond with the oxygen. This oxygen right here from my alcohol, since it dropped the hydrogen, it doesn't have it anymore, it needs to make a bond as well. So that's what's going to get picked up right there. So I'm going to have a carbon, oxygen, and then another alkyl group. It looks a little bit like an ether right there. This right here is called a hemiacetal, which hemi means half. This is half of an acetal. We're almost there. So a hemiacetal has a hydroxide group on the carbon and it has an oxygen with an alkyl group on the carbon right there. Now hemiacetals are not normally stable. We'll talk about an exception to that in just a minute. But if you have a hemiacetal and you have an alcohol present, which generally you do because you had an alcohol in your original thing, I'm going to put two primes on that R just in case it's a different alcohol right there. When I add an alcohol to a hemiacetal, I'm going to have an elimination reaction, which means I'm eliminating something from these. My elimination is going to come in the terms of water, the hydroxide group and the hydrogen group. So the hydrogen from this OH, the OH from my alcohol, those are going to come together to make water. Okay, and then I'm going to have this oxygen that needs to have a bond and an alkyl group that needs to make a bond. So those will bond together right there. So my product would be, let's put what we had already there, there's my oxygen there. It's going to now bond to that other alkyl group that was on the alcohol right here. And this is the acetal. Okay, so this was the hemiacetal. It only has one of these OR groups. The complete acetal has two of the OR groups right there. The same type of reaction can happen when you react a ketone with an alcohol. So the first thing you're going to get is this hemiacetal where this hydrogen is going to come in and attach to that oxygen like that. with there because it's, the hydrogen will attach to the oxygen and then this oxygen right here is going to come in and bond to this carbon and this other alkyl group it is still there I'm just going to move it to the bottom just like that so that should be the two primes on there so this is your hemiacetal just like that, one OR group, one OH group on that that can then if it reacts with another alcohol like that, this right here, remember the hydrogen, the hydroxide and the hydrogen can combine to make the water and then you're going to get the complete acetal. We'll put three primes on this one. That's the one that came from that second alcohol right there. Here's my acetal, two OR groups were just like that. Okay, now I said your hemiacetals are generally not real stable and they will continue to react until you get the acetal. There is a very important exception to that. So let's look at this. An important exception is when you have a molecule that has both an alcohol in it. So here's the alcohol, the hydroxide group, and 
an aldehyde or a ketone in it. This molecule right here has an aldehyde at one end and it has a hydroxide or an alka group, alcohol group on the other end. So, so this would be an intramolecular hemiacetal formation because both of your alcohol and your aldehyde group is coming from the same molecule. So what can happen here is we can have this hemiacetal formation between the two ends of the molecule, which if you can imagine, we'll bring those two ends together and we're going to make a circle or a ring right here. So if I go through the reaction conditions like before, remember your hydrogen that's on your alcohol is going to come and attach to the oxygen that was on the carbonyl or the carbon oxygen double bond. So then I'm going to have this carbon right here. It did have a hydrogen and a double bond to an oxygen, but now that double bond oxygen is going to be an alcohol right there. It is still going to have these four carbons on bonded to it as well. This oxygen that was on that end carbon, it lost its hydrogen, so it now wants to make another bond. This carbon also wants to make another bond here. So that's where your oxygen is going to bond to right there. And so then we're going to have the rest of our um, the rest of our carbons just like this. Okay, so this was, if I number these, it kind of makes it a little bit easier. If I call this carbon one, two, three, four, five, here's carbon one. That was the carbonyl carbon. Here is carbon two. We can explicitly draw it. Here's carbon three, carbon four, and carbon five. The carbon five was attached to the hydroxide group. It is now attached to that oxygen there. So this is a hemiacetal. It is now a ring, so we can call it a cyclic hemiacetal. We will see this a lot when we start talking about carbohydrate chemistry, so it's a good place to start looking at those. And again, like I said, we'll see them again.